Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna give you some tips on what to do when you have a home fire. Coming up. Hi everyone. This is Ernesto from Out of Boy Cowboy. And on this channel, we give you health and wealth tips to help you become more successful. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about what to do when you have a house fire. Now it was 2 a.m. I had just arrived to an airport in Anchorage, Alaska, and I had been there maybe 15 minutes and I get a text that says, hey, Ernesto, did you know your house is burning down? If you already knew, I'm sorry to bother you, tell you again. And I thought, what? I was just looking forward to this trip I was gonna do. I wasn't thinking where my house is gonna burn. I thought, no way. I wrote him back. I said, no, I didn't. And I said, how bad was it? And they started telling me about it. And I said, okay. Well, first thing I did was I texted the tenants and I said, hey, was it a candle or a cigarette? Because I wanted them to, if they had something to do with it, to admit to it. And they did, which could be useful. Now, the other, the next thing I did was to stay cool. There's nothing you could do about it. It's just a house. Now, I'm not happy about seeing my house like this. As you can see, it's completely destroyed and I'm gonna lose a lot of money, but there's nothing I could do about it. So sometimes in life, you just have to roll with the punches, like you say. Don't stress. Being stressed never helps. It doesn't do anything for you. So think about the Titanic when it was sinking. All the people, they were running and freaking out and everything. Those are the ones that go first. They do things they don't think, they die. When you kick back and you say, hey, let me think about this. Let me think about my best options here. And you're gonna be a lot more likely to survive that sinking ship, okay? So my house is already destroyed, that's done. It's in the past, forget it. Now what's the next step? Well, I mentioned this in another video. You're gonna start getting a lot of calls from adjusters. I do not recommend adjusters, you do not need them. There's different parts of your insurance policy. Now there's contents for all the stuff inside. There's the construction and then there's like liability. Those are the three main parts. Now construction was pretty obvious how I'm going to rebuild the house. The insurance company is going to send someone out and they're going to do testing for lead, asbestos or any other toxic materials in your house. That's a given. Then they're going to have someone come and do an estimate of what needs to be repaired and how much it's gonna cost. Now you wanna make sure you're playing an active role in that because that can vary widely. I got bids from 70,000 to about 500,000 to fix this house. I looked at it personally and I, I calculated I could fix it in about $50,000 to just replace everything and get some guys to help me and just fix it. But once the insurance sends people in to do testing, it opens up a can of worms. It tested positive for asbestos and lead. Now, lead and asbestos abatement is very expensive. I, I haven't gotten the price yet, but they told me it could cost anywhere from twenty dollars to $130,000. And that's basically a huge waste of money, in my opinion. <laughs> but that's the state of California. They charge that. They, cut, they force you to do that. So they have to come in and get all the debris and separate it. It can't even be dumped with normal trash. It has to go into a separate trash pile because it's toxic. And basically what they're doing is they're just gutting the house. They're taking all the, the plaster off the walls, all the stuff that might have asbestos and exposing it. Now, asbestos sounds really scary and it's not a good thing. You don't want to breathe, obviously. But it's actually the state rock of California just to give you an idea of how bountiful it is. There's actually more asbestos outside of your house in the environment than there is inside of your home. It's everywhere. Now, if you work in insulation or you work somewhere where it's in concentrated amounts and you're breathing it, of course, it's gonna do a lot of damage to you because it goes into your lungs and you can't really get it out. So you can get cancer, you can get all sorts of different lung disorders with COPD. So you wanna to try to avoid that, obviously. But this house has asbestos in it. Now, here I am, I'm filming, and it has lead. Now, it's probably not the best thing to do, 
but I'm not sweeping or doing anything to kick it up into the air so I breathe it in. I'm just walking on it, I'm just filming. You know, I, more than anything, I'm having a hard time breathing because of the smell of the bird, the smoke. Everything smells in here. So remember, when you have a fire, it's not like a bonfire where you're burning a bunch of logs. <laughs> you're burning hundreds, if not thousands of different chemicals, glues, plastics, metals, all sorts of different stuff that's getting burned and releasing toxic odors into the environment and into the whole building. Now this is my second fire. On the first fire we had, we had a fire on the second floor and pretty much everything in the house had to be thrown away. Like the clothes on the first floor looked perfect, but when I tried to put them on, they had this weird odor to them. <laughs> so I washed them and I washed them and I washed them. I took them to the dry cleaners it will not come out. It's not going to come out. So if you're home burned, you can try to salvage some of your clothes, but most likely you're not going to be able to use any of it anymore. Most of your stuff, even if it looks okay, is going to be trashed or you're going to have to donate it or something because it's going to have this funky odor like barbecue and you're not going to be able to get rid of it. And actually those odors are really toxic. See, those odors are actually really toxic because I, like I said, it's a bunch of plastics and stuff. So it gets into everything. So basically the insurance is already saying they're gonna replace the entire inside of the house. The house is gonna be gutted down to beams. Even though one room burned and there was collateral damage pretty much throughout the top floor. But the first floor and the basement look fine, but there's a smell of smoke. And of course there's water that got into the walls. So the walls, have to be assessed for water damage and for mold. Again, a lot of policies do not cover mold, but they will cover mold if it's a result of water damage from putting out the fire in your house. So there's stipulations for stuff. Now, if you're not real sure how to handle a lot of that stuff, you might want to consult with the public adjuster, but you can just consult with them on a fee basis. Don't sign a contract where they take a percentage of your payment for your house. That's a very bad decision. Now I've been getting a lot of pressure from them. I would say I've been getting between 30 and 50 phone calls a day and text messages. I opened my door at one of the houses I live in and I saw about 20 men out there. And this is like at seven o'clock at night. They're looking for me. They want to try to convince me to go with their company. They make a lot of money really quick and that's great for them. That's their business, but you could do this yourself. As I mentioned before, let's say this is a $500,000 claim. If you sign on the dotted line with an adjuster, they're going to tell you, Hey, it's not going to cost you anything. Sure. It's not going to cost you anything directly. I'm not going to pay anything out of pocket, out of my pocket, but I am going to pay because my policy limit is 500,000. So if I sign and they take 20%, they usually take around 20%. It could vary about by around 10%, but let's say 20%. I'm gonna have to give them $100,000 out of that 500. So that means I'm gonna have 400,000 to rebuild my house. That's not good. You wanna make sure you have every penny to rebuild your house. They're gonna take a percentage of everything, contents and construction and whatever else might come up, they're gonna take a percentage of it. So you wanna avoid that. If you're not real sure about what to do and you're scared and you're worried you sought your house, I understand it freaks you out. Get an attorney to help you. They're going to know a hundred times more and it's going to cost you way less. I already consulted with an attorney, as I mentioned in, in uh, previous videos, and I use a legal service called Legal Shield. I speak to them. They tell me how to handle things as issues come up and they give me advice. That's all I need. You know, I can figure stuff out on my own. If I'm not sure, I ask them, they tell me. I hired an adjuster for a fire we had before, and it was a huge waste of time. I called him a few times, and that's about it. He basically didn't do anything. He knew he was going to get a percentage of everything we got. And once I signed, and that was it. Game over. So all my payments had to go through him and then through me. Then to me. Really suck. So do not get stuck in that. It's a huge trap. You can do it on your own. Now, you need to get organized. The first thing you need to do is talk, call your insurance. If you have a mortgage, call your bank and let them know what's going on because they're going to want to come out and inspect and know what's going on. And meet with the adjuster 
remember the adjuster for your insurance it's a love-hate relationship okay they're people just like you so you want to be nice to them some people are really not cool with them that's a big mistake they're the ones that are going to be deciding what's going to get paid for and how much so do not be rude be cool you can be in disagreement and you can work things out with them and when i come across things with my adjuster that we just do not see eye to eye to where let's say um she's offered me fifty thousand for the abatement and i got some bids and they're telling me it's a hundred thousand and i say okay well show me a company that will do it and they say okay here's a company but they're only going to do three quarters of the work you can negotiate all that and if it's and if you can't you actually can't i like to remind the person that's helping me hey i really appreciate your help i'm going to consult with my attorney and see what they say and see if this is a point that is going to have to be litigated and i tell them hey i'm going to try to work with you with everything i can and with whatever we're not going to be at eye to eye with is going to get litigated by my attorney now nobody wants litigation especially insurance companies they're gonna lose because basically you have an insurance policy they have to fix your house you paid your premiums they know that they're on the hook for it so bringing in an attorney is just going to drive up their costs even more it's not going to help them it's going to make them pay a lot more so sometimes just mentioning that she'll say hey you know what why don't we just split the difference or let me pay you this and i'll say no I don't want to split the difference. I think I'm being fair. I want to hold them out. And then we'll go from there. And sometimes they just give it to you. Now, it's going to be up to you. You're going to have to gauge that. And you may have to bring an attorney in. Depends on your insurance company and who your adjuster is. Now, in this particular fire, it's, an, it's a new process. And I'm going to be updating you as I'm going along. But based on my experience, she seems like a fair adjuster. First thing I did was I got a folder and I started making records of everything. I got a notepad, who I talked to, what they told me, take lots of pictures of all the damage. I had tenants here, so I have to maintain that line of communication and see if you want, see what you can do to repair some of the damage and save some of your insurance money. Remember, that money is yours. It's your policy, you paid for it. So I'm getting bids from this company to come out here and clean up the debris outside the house that fell from the fire. I said, okay, how much was it? The insurance company said, well, they're gonna charge $1,200. I looked at it and I said, wow, I could clean that up like in three hours by myself or I can get somebody to help me. So I got a couple guys and I cleaned it up like in an hour. And I told the insurance, hey, I cleaned it up. Here's my bill for 1200. They paid me the $1,200, simple. They'll let you do things like that. If it's your own property and you have contents, you can go out immediately and buy clothes, electronics, whatever you need for your everyday life and save all the receipts and they'll reimburse you for it because they're going to pay for your contents inside your house anyway. Now, some people say, well, I'm going to go buy the most expensive thing. You can do whatever you want, but remember there's policy limits. Okay. So, I remember when I worked the adjuster, he said, go out and buy whatever you want. Buy Louis Vuitton, buy whatever, the expensive. And that wasn't very good advice. And I didn't follow it anyway, because I didn't think that was very ethical. Now you want to maintain your ethics and your integrity. I'm not going to do that. What I did was I bought things that I actually would buy and needed because my stuff was damaged when my home burned. Now my house, had a policy limit of a hundred thousand dollars of content. I thought that was a lot. It wasn't, it was nothing. In fact, that hundred thousand dollars of content got used up in one bedroom. And my mom's house is five bedrooms. So one bedroom's worth of stuff, my parents' clothes. You might look at it and say, well, how is this a hundred thousand? Well, my parents had clothes in there from the fifties, from the 60s and 70s and suits that I know would be worth five dollars at the thrift store But guess what? They can't buy those anymore. So the insurance company has to pay Replacement value it's called it depends on your policy So check your clauses on your policy. Make sure you have a policy. that says Replacement value you don't want them to depreciate all this stuff 
if you have a suit that's that you paid a thousand dollars for 30 years ago now it's worth five bucks they'll give you five bucks if you don't have replacement value you want replacement value so they'll give you a thousand dollars so even though all the stuff in my mom's room looked old and it didn't look like it was worth anything honestly it was probably worth about a thousand dollars everything even their furniture it was old but the stuff was worth about over a hundred thousand to replace so we actually ran out of money now if i had taken the adjuster's advice and went out and bought louis vuitton and all this other stuff he told me my my money would be gone i'd have nothing that hundred thousand would have gets would have gotten spent on a few versace shirts so no don't do that be honest and don't buy stuff like that that you normally wouldn't buy and if you do have a lot of valuables in your house make sure you pump up the content value on your policy to cover your stuff if you have art pieces if you collect baseball cards i had a baseball card collection destroyed not covered so think about all those little things that hey you know i hadn't really thought about that think about it that stuff's gonna have to be replaced if you have a fire so make sure you have enough content damage as for the building make sure you're getting the right amount that's a that's a tricky part it's actually not that tricky. You can watch videos and, and teach yourself, but I'm going to explain to you how you want to do this. Basically, as soon as you you get a, you have a fire, like I said, get organized, get a notepad, start keeping receipts, start talking to your adjuster, get prices for stuff and say, hey, like I did, they're going to charge me 1200 clean outside. Why don't I do it? And I'll bill you. Your insurance adjuster is not going to offer you that, but they'll say, okay, since you're mentioning it, sure, I'll give you the 1200 and start establishing that sort of relationship so you can try to do some of the work on your own. The other thing is when you get contractors to look at your house, make sure you're getting reimbursed properly. Now this house was made in 1908, so it has plaster or lath on the walls. Now that is very expensive. It's a lost art. They don't even do it anymore. I found a guy that does it in Beverly Hills, and he's basically an artist. And he charges about $10,000 per room, okay? In the old days, they ain't had drywall, so that's the only way they did it. Now it's a, like, it's a craft. So now, I don't need to redo my house in, in plaster. I can do it in drywall, it's not a big deal. Instead of spending $10,000 to replaster this room, I'm gonna spend about $1,000 for a drywall and they're going to drywall it and it's going to be done so i'm going to save about nine thousand dollars now that's money that you can keep for your for yourself or for other built construction on your house now i apologize it's a little noisy because all the windows and doors are gone from the fire and there's cars driving around out here so it's totally exposed to the elements of this house right now again so the the amount that's left over from that plaster is money I can put back into the house. For example, this house didn't have central air and heat before. I had air conditioners in the windows and I had one small heater and on one wall. Well, now I have an extra, let's say $30,000 because I'm not using plaster, I'm using drywall. I can put that into central AC and heat. I'll have some extra money. Maybe I can put a electric garage door back instead of a regular garage door. You get what I'm saying, and all that is totally legal and it's totally fine. Be transparent with your insurance company. Let them know, you know, what you saw was damaged and, and point out things, make a list. I got here, I made a list of everything I saw damaged on the property. I went over it with the contractor that was getting the bid and the insurance agent. And they even thanked me. They said, hey, thanks for telling me. There's no way I would have saw that stuff. I didn't even know it was there. One example was my fence. I had this huge decorative metal fence in my yard. It's gone. I don't know where it's at. I think the fire department knocked it over and some of these people that recycle metal may have came by and took it and it's gone. Well, the gate's worth about five grand. There's no trace of it. So of course the insurance company is gonna know that to pay for it. I have to tell them. So go through your house and make a list of everything and then cross reference with the contractor that's giving the bid at the estimate to the insurance company so that's the process i'm in right now i'm going to update you as i go along but right now i just had a contractor come by he took a look 
and now I'm waiting to get his 50 page report on everything that needs to be fixed. He's gonna give me line items, what needs to be fixed. And I'm gonna look at it, I'm gonna review it, I'm gonna say, hey, you know what, you missed this, this, that, that. I'm gonna give you some evidence, add it on, and then they'll give that to the insurance company, and the insurance company will say, okay, you know, you have $300,000, we're gonna give you 300,000, or we're gonna give you 350 or 250 or whatever. And that's where you're gonna have to negotiate. Oftentimes, like in our other one, our other fire, the insurance company's estimator gave me a bid for, let's say, 200000 I called guys, three different contractors, and their bids were 250, 300, 400. And they were all over the place, but I couldn't find anybody to do it for 200. So I had to negotiate with the insurance. I said, hey, I can't find anybody for 200. And they said, well, use our guy then for 200. And I said, well, I don't like your guy. I want to use my own guy because their guy was basically gonna suck all the money up and do the same repairs that my guy for 250 was gonna do. Plus, he was gonna do about another 100,000 worth of extra work because the other house also had lath and they had antique floors. They were um, red oak, which are very expensive. And I'm not gonna put that in anymore, it's too expensive. So the floor was worth like 50 grand. And I think we just put some cheap like pine wood or something. We still made our floors, but they were like pine or whatever it was to use. And they cost like 10 grand. So I saved 40 grand there. And that, again, that's up to me. I'm putting a lower quality product. It's gonna be worth less. But I'm gonna have that extra 40 grand to work with. So my guy that I found was willing to do a lot more upgrades. So I negotiated with the insurance and at the end, they agreed. Instead of giving me 200, they gave me 250. So you're gonna have to go through that process. And if you can't reach a, you know, an agreement, then you bring an attorney in. That's gonna help you. But I'll update you as I go along. And for now, that's where I'm at. I'm in the process of getting bids to repair all the damage here. Thank you again for listening. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll answer your questions. <laughs>